this is the twelfth lecture <coughs> and this is our problem session three. We will work out problems on mid frequency analysis of common emitter amplifiers, the theory that we developed yesterday. We will see its applications in calculating uh, figures for practical problems. But before that, we want to take up a couple of problems, couple of interesting problems about BGT biasing and current meters, which we have not done earlier. <coughs> and the first problem is this. We have a fairly elaborate circuit. Try to draw with me. This is Q1 and it is base is connected to, to the collector. We have a second transistor like this Q2 whose base is also connected to the collector. And then we have a resistance <coughs> R2 which goes to ground. And this transistor Q1 drives another transistor Q3. The current here is I0 <coughs> and the resistance here is R, Re. It is connected to the emitters, it is it's, it's Re and the voltage measured from here to ground is VC3. Okay? It is not VCE because from collector to ground VC3. This is the circuit. It is not the ordinary current mirror circuit. It is not the Wiedler circuit either. There is an extra transistor and let us see what the question says. <coughs> the question says in this circuit assume all transistors to be identical Q1, Q2, Q3. There are three transistors made on the same chip and therefore they are identical and the betas are so large then they can be assumed to go to infinity which means that the base current is negligible compared to the collector current and the collector current and the emitter current are the same. Okay? All right, beta tends to infinity. The question is to find an expression for I0. <coughs> this current, the current that is drawn by the load transistor, it is, it is this current which is required to be stabilized. Okay? So find I0, this is the first part of the question and then it says that if R1 equal to R2, if these two resistors are equal, if R1 is equal to R2, and all collector currents are equal. That is IC1 equals to IC2 equal to IC3. Now obviously this does not require a stipulation. IC1 must be the same as IC2 because they flow like this. The base current, the only diversion is this base current. This is negligible and therefore IC1 equal to IC2 is, is given by this circuit, what you want to do is IC3 which is equal to I0, IC3 is equal to I0, you want this current to be a mirror of this current. All right? You want I0 to be a mirror of IC1, IC1 is the same as the current through R1 because the base currents are negligible. But, but there is a base current in Q2 also. That is correct. All base currents are negligible. Beta tends to infinity and therefore what you want is that this current which is the reference current should flow in the load transistor also. So it says if this is so then show that show that I0 is equal to VCC divided by twice RE. <coughs> the idea is you remember in the ordinary mirror ordinary current mirror the reference current is VCC minus VBE divided by the reference resistance R1. Here you see this is independent of VBE and this is the purpose of this circuit. This is also a current mirror. You want to make I0 even if VBE is small compared to VCC, VBE increases, VBE decreases with temperature. It is a temperature sensitive element and therefore what you want to do is this current you want to make independent of VBE and this is the purpose of this circuit. Okay? 
under this condition the next question is <coughs> what is the relationship between this is also wanted relationship between R e R 1 and R 2 R 1 and R 2 are equal given. So, what is the relationship that is wanted that means what is the value of R e required to satisfy this condition that all collector currents are equal. Then a numerical part if V c c equals to 15 volt and V b e can be taken as 0.7 volt <coughs> design this circuit to have design means you find out these resistors R e R 1 and R 2 ok. Design this circuit to have I 0 equal to 1 milli ampere all right. <coughs> this is third part and the fourth part is under this condition that is for this design for this design what is the lowest voltage that can be applied to the collector of Q3 that is find VC3 minimum what is the lowest voltage required for the current mirror to operate. Is there a lowest voltage? Why can't we why can't we apply any voltage that we like? Why is this question that find the lowest V C three? Pardon me? Saturation, that's right. We don't want Q three to be in saturation, we want Q three to be in the active region. That is V C B must be must be <laughs> a quantity like a voltage being reverse bias does not make sense. VCB should be either positive or negative. What do you require VCB to be? Negative. Oh no, positive. positive because it is to be reverse bias, it is an NPN transistor. Okay. So, you want VCB to be positive. Now, what is VCB? Just a minute. V C B is equal to V C E plus V E B. No, let us put it the other way around. V C E is equal to V C B plus V B E, right. So, lowest V C E that is required is <coughs> V C B at the most can be 0. It should be positive. So, V C B is greater than equal to 0 and therefore, V C E must be greater than equal to V B E. That means, the collector emitter voltage must be no less than V B E, no less than 0.7. Okay? That is the meaning of the third question, fourth question. Is the question clear? Sir. Yes. Oh, we have to find out a lot of things. Okay, let me go back. First thing is you have to find out I0. I0 general, general, general expression. Okay. Second, if R1 is R2 and all collector currents are made equal, then show that I0 is this. Okay. Now, if this is to be true, then what is the relationship between R e and R 1? If all collector currents have to be equal, what is the relationship? Then a numerical part, design the circuit for a given load current of 1 milli ampere. Yes, I 0 being equal to V C <coughs> by 2 R e yes. is also a condition for R e by the region R e normal. That is correct. That is correct. Under this, that is if all collector currents have to be equal what is the relationship between R e and R 1. It is only under that condition that I 0 will be equal to V c c by 2 R e all right. Then this is the numerical part and then finally, for this design what is the minimum V c 3 and that I have already explained <coughs> why a minimum is needed, why a minimum is needed. Now, if you look at this circuit, <coughs> if you look at this circuit <coughs> carefully, you can see that this voltage, the voltage from here to ground K 
can be calculated by two routes. One is via Q3 and the other is via Q1, Q2, R2. All right. If I do that, then you notice that VBE3, VBE3 plus I0RE, that is the voltage drop across RE, this should be equal to VBE1 plus VBE2 plus the current through R2 multiplied by current through R2 multiplied by R2. Now, what is the current through R2? If you look at this, well, we do not, I want first an expression for I0. So, I cannot assume that I0 is equal to this, IC2. Okay. Now, I do not want IC2 because this is another variable. Even IC1 is not, in general, IC1 is not guaranteed to be I0. So, what I do is, look at this, I find out current in this. What is this current? This is VCC minus this drop, which contains I0. These are tricks of the trade. I do not want extra variables. I want I0, so I do not want to write in terms of any. So, VCC minus this drop divided by R1 is the current. Divided by R1 plus R2. Yeah, that's what, that also I can do. Yes, that also I can do. <coughs> I prefer to do it this way because I0 is involved here. Okay, let's let's try this. So this current is. Let me use a different color. This current is VCC minus <coughs> VBE3 minus I0 RE divided by R1. And this is the current that flows to R2 and therefore the drop in R2 would be equal to VCC minus VBE3 minus I0RE divided by R1 multiplied by R2. Why did not I do it the other way that this gentleman suggested? Because VBE1 and VBE2 are already there and this would be an identity. Okay. I want I0. I want to find an expression for I0 in terms of known quantities. VBE is I0, that is the load current and the, the VCC. If I, obviously now I get a general expression for RE. If you clear the algebra, then I get, I will skip this algebra. <coughs> what I get is I0 equals to R2 by R1 multiplied by VCC which you can see R2 by R1 multiplied by VCC plus VBE1 plus VBE2 minus this VBE3 comes on the other side, it comes on the other side VBE3 1 plus 1 comes from here and R2 by R1 is here. So, 1 plus R2 by R1 whole divided by RE I0 RE and here I0 RE R2 by R1. So, RE 1 plus R2 by R1. This is the general expression. All right. <coughs> now, if I C1, I C1, the collector current of the first transistor, I C1 and I C2 are obviously equal. If I C1 and I C2 are equal, obviously their VBEs must be identical because the collector current is I s exponential e to the power V B E by K T Q V B E by K T. So, V B E 1 and V B E 2 can be written as twice V B E 1. Agreed? We have eliminated one of the unknown quantities and then if it is, if it says that I C 1 equals to I C 2, this is given and if it is required, if it is forced to be equal to I C 3, that is I 0, this implies that V B E 3 is also equal to V B E 1, all right. And in addition, under what condition it is equal to that? Under what condition? If the collector currents of second and third transistors are the same, if the collector currents of two transistors are the same, their VBEs must be identical. Only then, 
Yes, because they are identical transistors, their saturation currents I s are equal. You remember I sub c is approximately equal to I sub e is given by I s e to the power q v b e by k t. So, IC3 is the same as I0, just to indicate that it is the collector current of third transistor, that is all. Okay. Any other question? No. So, what I get is that under this special condition that all collector currents are equal and also R1 equals to R2, then you see twice VBE1 shall cancel with this quantity. Is not that right? This is 1, 1 plus 1, 2, 2 VBE3, VBE3 is the same as VBE1. So, these two quantities shall cancel with each other under this special condition and this will become a 2, all right. So, and R2 by R1 are equal, so this also becomes unity. In other words, I get I0 is equal to VCC by 2 RE, which was the second part. Well, second part of the question, okay, VCC by 2 RE and obviously you see this is independent of VBE. This was the purpose of the current mirror, this is a current mirror, this is the purpose of the current mirror. Then <coughs> the relationship between RE and R1, you see I0 is equal to VCC divided by twice RE, this is also equal to IC1 which is, IC1 is VCC minus now that the resistors are equal and Q1 and Q2 are identical, so twice VBE1 divided by 2R1. Now we use this formula because I want a relationship between RE and R1. Obviously, if you take these two quantities off, you get a relationship between R1 and Re and this relation after clearing the algebra it becomes R1 equal to Re 1 minus 2 VBE1 divided by VCC. This is the required relationship. Okay. Now as far as design is concerned it is very simple design is I0 is required to be 1 milliampere. <coughs> Therefore, Re shall be equal to Vcc divided by twice I0. This is the relationship that we had obtained. I0 was Vcc by 2 Re. So, this is 15 volt. Did I give you Vcc? Vcc is 15 volt, 15 <coughs> volt divided by 1 milliampere is required, the current. So, this is 2 milliamps and that becomes 7.5 K. And from the relationship between R1 and Re, I get R1 equal to R2 equal to Re, which is 7.5 K <coughs> multiplied by 1 minus 2 times 0.7 divided by 15. And this calculates out to 6.8 K, 6.8 K. Finally, the VC3 mean what would this be not 0 0.2 0 0.7 plus i0 re which is which is 7.5 volt re is 7.5 k and 1 milliampere so this is equal to 8.2 volt this is the minimum voltage that is required to be maintained between the collector and ground if it falls below this Q3 shall go into the saturation region. Agreed? That completes the question. Any question on this solution? No. Yes. Please. Like this VBE. Right. For the saturation and active case, we have taken it to be 0 or positive. VBE we have taken is 0.7 for the active region, yes. No, I have not taken 0. Oh, I must explain that. You see, what I said was VCE, all right, let us go back, is VCB plus VBE, all right. 
and VCB has to be greater than equal to 0. Therefore, VCE has to be greater than equal to VBE. That is what I say. Oh, because the collector base junction must be reverse biased and sits in NPN transistor. No, collector has to be positive with respect to the base. VCB cannot be negative. That is all we are saying. No, <laughs> that is not what we are considering. We are only saying that VCB must be reverse biased. VCB cannot be negative. VCB must be positive. Collector must be positive with respect to the base. So, VCB is greater than 0, greater than equal to 0. So, VCE must be greater than equal to VBE. Mind you, we are finding the lowest voltage. Okay? It is only when VCE is greater than equal to VBE that it will go into the active region. Otherwise, it will not. This is the lowest. You cannot go below this. Question 2 is a mixture of AC and DC and it is a tricky question, a simple question but a tricky question. It says a very simple circuit, a current I <coughs> flows here <coughs> and a single transistor with a resistance R. This voltage is VCE plus minus and the supply is connected directly to the base. This is the circuit, very simple circuit. It says, it says that the question is the following. Listen to the question carefully. <coughs> the question is with changing I, if I changes, if I changes, show that VCE is a constant, show that VCE is independent of I provided capital R is equal to 1 by GM. Okay? Show that VCE is independent of small changes in I provided this resistance is carefully chosen. Okay? Now, you look at this VCE is, is equal to, pardon me? Question is complete. Question is complete. You have to show that v small VCE is independent of a variation with capital I will write a small i. Okay? If, sm if capital I changes, show that VCE does not change, provided R equal to 1 by GM. This is the question. Now, how do we solve it? Sir, is the emitter connected to ground? It does not matter. It could be connected to ground, it could be connected to a negative supply, it could be connected to a resistance and ground, it does not matter, wherever it is connected. Now, pardon me? Yeah, yeah, you can use it as part of any circuit, provided there is a flow of, there is a path for flow of current, it cannot be hanging, okay? It must be connected to ground through a supply, through a resistance, whatever it is. All right? Now, how do you solve this circuit? You see, if you look at VCE, this point is the same as this point. So, it is VBE minus the drop in R. Isn't that right? Okay. So, it is VBE minus, what is the drop in R? Capital I R. It is the total, there is a base current. We assume that beta is much greater than 1. This condition is required. All right. Now, small Vc is the total collector current 
total collector emitter voltage small vb is the total base emitter voltage so i must include in i if i is taken to be the dc part small variations that is i plus i is the point clear if we write the dc the dc is fine dc is this vbe minus ir if i write the total what is the total this is vce plus small vce okay the total voltage spinral is vbe the total voltage is capital vb plus small v subscript small uh, subscript small b small e similarly i must include the total current here i that is small changes in i therefore capital i changes to i plus i so taking the entire current going through that if beta is greater yes. than 1 yes if beta is much greater than not 1 not just greater much greater therefore we ignore this current okay we ignore this current now let's let's take the incremental part of this equation this total equation i can write i can write small vc is capital vc plus small vc similarly small vb is sum of the dc part plus ac part then obviously because the circuit is linear the dc parts will balance and ac parts will balance all right so if i write the ac part of this equation what i get is <coughs> i get vce equals to vbe minus small i r okay now what is the relationship between small vbe and v pi they are equal approximately ignoring rx okay and what is the relationship between this incremental collector current and v pi gm v pi okay gm v pi r so i get vce equal to this agreed what i want is that that vce should be independent of small i the total collector emitter voltage should not depend <coughs> on small i so what i want is that even if there is an i the vce should be equal to zero so this is zero which leads to r equal to 1 by gm <laughs> my question was that even if capital this i changes this should be independent of this change in other words if capital i changes to i plus i small vce should remain as capital vce it should not contain any ac part which means that the ac part of this should be equal to zero which is what i have done here so i have proved that if r equal to 1 by gm the collector emitter voltage remains steady it is independent of variations of the collector current <coughs> question 3 is a question on common emitter amplifier question 3 draw the amplifier with me there is a plus 10 volt supply 2.2k the transistor with an emitter resistance of 1k there is a capacitor goes to 4.7k there is a capacitor here also which i forgot to draw there is a capacitor here also and uh, the base biasing is through 100k and 47k 47k there is a capacitor here coupling and the source resistance is 1k you have a vs here and this is v0 this is a simple common emitter amplifier okay <coughs> the questions are the following <coughs> 
Firstly, have you been able to draw? Firstly, you have to find the Q point of the transistor Q. That means you have to find out I sub C and V C E, okay, Q point. And from that, you have to estimate G M and R pi. G M and R pi. It is given that beta, beta for the transistor is given as 100 at 25 degrees C and it is also given that for the transistor R x, now note the, note the way it is specified, R x H R e, now we are mixing hybrid pi parameters with hybrid parameters because these are what are specified by the manufacturers. It says R x, H R e and H O e, these three quantities are specified to be negligible, they go to 0. This is the total specification of the, of the amplifier, of the transistor, the beta is 100, R x, H R e and H O e can be neglected, okay. We will see what this means. Now, you are required to find out Q point, then G m and R pi and <coughs> also these quantities, A v voltage gain, input resistance R i, current gain A i, output resistance R 0 and A v s which is as I said V 0 by V s, okay. This, are, this is the complete question. Now, let us see, let us proceed step by step. <coughs> the first thing you notice is V, you have to calculate the base current. To determine the Q point, you require collector current and collector emitter voltage. How do you calculate collector current? You first require the base current. Now, as far as the base current is concerned, you have to find out VBB, which is 10 multiplied by 4 447 divided by 147, okay, that is VBB. You have to find out RB, 100K parallel 47K. I will give you the numerical values, I have calculated them. 100K parallel 47K. Then IB would be VBB minus VBE, which you shall take as 0.7 divided by, divided by RB, which is the parallel combination of these two plus beta plus 1, 101 times 1k, okay, very good. So, the biasing has, has gone in, I am very happy at this. VBB is VCC R2 by R1 plus R2 and as I said, this is 10 times 47 divided by 147 volt and this comes out as 3.2 volt. RB, which is 100k, parallel 47k, this calculates out to 32k. In my calculations, I often make uh, approximations which uh, I do not advise that you do, okay. Therefore, I sub B is equal to 3.2 VBB minus 0.7 VBE divided by RB which is 32k plus beta plus 1, 101 multiplied by Re which is 1k and this comes out as 18.8 .8 microampere. Therefore, the collector current I sub C would be simply beta times this which means 1.88 milliampere and if this is so, then VCE, the collector emitter voltage, the DC part shall be simply VCC minus the collector current multiplied by multiplied by 3.2 RC plus RE, this you must not forget, 3.2 K and this comes out as 3.96 volt, 3.96 volt. Now, this is the Q point. The next question is to find G m and R pi. Now, G m is I sub C by 26 millivolt and I sub C is 1.88 divided by 26 
this is so many moles and this comes out as 72 millimole 72 millimole we don't want to write uh, 72 multiplied by 10 to the minus 3 or 0 0.072 we write it in this form it's your choice therefore r pi which is beta by gm can be very easily found out 100 by 72 millimoles and therefore this will come out in k 1.389 k 1.389 k so we have found out the answer to the second part of the question the third part is <coughs> to calculate all those gains first av beta is given as 100 beta was given as 100 okay the voltage gain is minus gm approximately rc parallel rl so it is rc parallel rl gm is 72 millimo 2.2 k 4.7 k that is the load okay so this is minus 72 millimo multiplied by 2.2 k parallel 4.7 k and this my calculation gives this is minus 110 a good figure a voltage gain of 110 okay 1 millivolt becomes how much 0 0.1 volt that is not too bad <coughs> the Ri input resistance would be Rb parallel Rx is ignored so it is Rb parallel R pi which is equal to 100 K well we had already found out Rb 32 K parallel 1.389 K which will be approximately 1.389 1.33 K that is not too different the current gain AI as you remember the current if the voltage gain in is known then the current gain is known AI is AV voltage gain multiplied by RI divided by RL therefore this is equal to minus 110 this is 1.33 divided by RL is 4.7 okay this becomes minus 31.1 capital R0 your HOE was given as 0 and therefore R0 tends to infinity small r0 tends to infinity therefore output resistance will be simply equal to rc which is equal to 2.2 k and finally avs is equal to av multiplied by vi divided by vs which is ri divided by ri plus rs therefore this is minus 110 1.33 divided by 2.33 rs is given as 1k and this comes out as minus 62.8 that completes the question now let us complicate matters this was simple this was simple in this problem in the same problem question 4 says in problem 3 if Rx, HOE and HRE are not neglected, how do the things change? This is the basic theme of question number 4. Rx is given. In question 3, we had assumed Rx 0, HRE 0 and HOE 0. Now Rx is given as 111 ohm. HRE from the manufacturer's data is given as 2 times 10 to the minus 4 and HOE is given as 20 micro mole. if that is so in question 3 recalculate everything <coughs> okay recalculate everything <coughs> now you do not ignore let us see how these transform into the hybrid pi model first of all rx can be taken directly rx obviously is measured from hie okay and finding out gm and r pi then rx is hie minus 
minus R pi. That is correct. So I know Rx. How to take care of HRE and HOE? Okay. What is it that we miss, that we are missing in the hybrid pi model? The value of small R0. That is all that we are missing. R mu, anyway, we do not want, we do not want to go anywhere near R mu. Why? Because that complicates the analysis. It makes a 3 by 3 matrix inversion. We do not want that. So, hopefully, it is our uh, pious thought that R mu would be very large. Okay? So, <laughs> let us see how R0 can be calculated from these two. All right? If you remember, we derived this, we did not derive, we simply said the relationship between G0 and H parameters is HOE minus GM HRE. This is what, this is what will give you R0. Okay. Now, we did not derive it. I asked you to derive it yourself. Let me give you a hint as to how to derive this. Okay. What we want is from the H parameter model, HIE, HRE, VCE, HFB, HFE, IB is the H parameter model and HOE. The corresponding hybrid pi parameter is Rx. These two should be identical, you see. Rx, it shouldn't be 1 by HOE. 1 by HOE, wonderful. Rx, R pi, and this is V pi. Then you have GM, V pi. R0. We do not want R mu. <laughs> okay? We do not want it. If R mu comes, then things become a little more complicated. But <clears throat> if these two, if these two are to be identical, then obviously if we measure the resistance here with the input shorted, it should be the same as the resistance here with the input shorted. Okay. Now, what do you get here? If you measure the resistance here, oh, these two, these two, this is the hybrid parameter model, and this is the hybrid pi. We want to find out the hybrid pi parameters in terms of hybrid parameters. Since these are identical, if the inputs are shorted in both, the output resistance should be the same. If you calculate these two output resistances, you shall see that this is precisely what you get. <coughs> you have to uh, figure out what you have, what you should do, either open circuit or short circuit somewhere. And since the two circuits are identical, wherever you measure voltage or current, they should be identical. Terminal voltages and current should be identical. All right. So this is the trick for proving this relationship. Pardon me. Oh, I wanted to establish this relationship. Okay, how do I do that? G zero, obviously G zero, G zero is one by R zero, and if we measure the resistance here, R zero figures here. Now I can measure it under open circuit, short circuit, whatever condition. I will do it under short circuit conditions because if I keep it open circuit, then H R E V C E does not come into the picture at all. Isn't that right? So I I make it a short circuit. I make it a short circuit, then V pi is 0. So here it is simply 1 by simply R0. Here H R E and H F E H O E all the three quantities shall be involved. And you shall see that they conspire to give a simple relation like this. It is a very simple exercise. Why all three will come? You do it and then you shall know. Because I B is here and I B is this current. Don't you see the coupling? <coughs> IB is this current, and this is not zero. So this drives a current in the other direction. You think about it. I can't do everything. 
Okay, now <coughs> if I use this relationship, then G0 is 20 micro mole HOE is given minus GM is found out. Oh, incidentally, since R0, Rx, HOE and HRE are not ignored, do they change the DC conditions, the Q point? No. So, GM remains the same? All right. So, I use the same GM multiplied by HRE is given as 2 times 10 to the minus 4 and this comes out as 14.4 micro mo. No, I beg your pardon. This calculates to 14.4, this part, isn't this? 144 milli is 10 to the minus 3, so 10 to the minus 7. And therefore, G0 becomes equal to 5.6 micro mo, which leads to R0 equal to 1 by G0, and that becomes 179K. Pretty large. Let us see how this affects. How this affects? AV, the voltage gain, is now minus GM. Instead of RL prime, we must also <coughs> include R0. So, minus GM, R0, parallel RC, parallel RL. And if you substitute the values, 72 milli mo multiplied by 179K, 2.2K, and the third one was 4.7K, all right? and this calculates out to minus 99.2. What was it earlier? 110. So, it is it is reduced. Why has it reduced? Because of R0, because of the shunting effect of R0. Okay. What about Ri? How does it change? It would be Rb parallel, since Rx is not ignored, Rx shall come, Rx plus R pi. And this is 32k parallel 1.389 that is r pi plus 0.111 k. This is 1.5 as you can see. So, 32 k and 1.5 k they, they become 1.43 k. It is higher now. Why? Because the shunting effect is reduced due to the introduction of Rx. Previously, it was 1.33 k, that is slightly larger. The current gain A sub i is A v R i divided by R l. So, this is minus 99.2 R i has increased to 1.43 k. This has decreased, but R i has increased, but you will still see the gain goes down divided by 4.7 k and that is minus 30.2, not too much. The earlier value was 31.1, so that is not too much. Our output resistance also changes. Yes. Previous Yeah. Shouldn't AI be positive? No. What is AI? AI is the collector current to AI is not the collector current, AI is the load current and load current was taken as flowing into the load. That is why this sign is negative. Okay. The output resistance R0, which is R0 parallel RC, now becomes 179K parallel 2.2K and this becomes 2.17K, not too much different. The gain from the source, that is AVS, is given by A V multiplied by R i divided by R i plus R s. When you do such problems, the equivalent circuit should be flashing in your mental picture. Okay. Source R s, then what does it see? It sees R i. So, the division between V i and V s is R i divided by R i plus R s. You must make this imprinted in your mind. Minus 99.2 1.43k, 1.43k plus 1k and this is minus 58.4. This gain is also reduced. Previously, it was 62.8. All right, that completes this question. The last one, 
question number 5 says repeat the same problem with Ari unbypassed. Okay, Ari unbypassed. Now, if Ari is unbypassed, and you remember the equivalent circuit, we have Vs, 1K, then we have, let's ignore Rx. All right, we put Rx equal to 0. We can include it, but for a change, let's ignore this. This is 1.389K. Then you have an Re which is equal to 1K. It is unbypassed. Then this is GM. Yeah. No, but <laughs> V pi is across R pi. We will enter into unnecessary complication. Let's let's work this out under the conditions of problem three, where R x, H R E, and H O E were at zero. R x, H O E, and H R E, all of them tend to zero. <coughs> R zero tends to zero, so this is simply G M V pi. This is V pi. R0 tends to infinity and so what we have here is Rc which is 2.2k and Rl. And we shall do things almost by inspection as you will see Rl is 4.7k. This is the equivalent circuit. So all that changes is all that changes is that this Re as far as the input side is concerned it reflects a resistance of beta plus 1 Re. If you take care of this, everything else fits into place. As you will see, we will do it almost by inspection. The output voltage is minus Gm Rl prime times V pi. Okay? Gm V pi times Rl prime and V pi is equal to V i, this is V i, V pi is V i, potential division between R pi and beta plus 1 R e and therefore V pi is V i R pi divided by R pi plus beta plus 1 R e. Therefore, A V which is V 0 by V i would be equal to minus G m R L prime multiplied by R pi divided by R pi plus beta plus 1 R e. <coughs> and if you put the numerical values, shock of life, the gain only becomes minus 1.51. All that you had the gain in minus G m R L prime has been killed by this factor. Okay, because there is a large quantity here beta plus 1 R e, 1.51 only as compared to minus 110 earlier, okay, minus 110. But what it does is the input resistance, R sub i, it becomes R b parallel, now no longer R pi, it becomes R pi plus beta plus 1 Re and if you calculate the values this comes as 24.4 K which is about 20 times the previous value. Okay. The input resistance is increased. The current gain usual thing A V R i divided by R L. R i is now increased and this is becomes minus 1.51 24.4 divided by 4.7 and this becomes minus 7.8. Current gain is also reduced. Okay. And AVS, so we did not make any further analysis. Just that factor that Re reflects as beta plus 1 Re solves everything. Okay. And AVS is AV times again that picture in mind 
R i divided by R i plus R s and if you put down numerical values this is minus 1.45. The gain is slightly greater than 1 and that brings us to the close of this session. Thank you.